Hey guys, so today in the blue playthrough, we are going to be talking about World War II, but I want to set it up first. Well, how do we get to World War II? We have to go through World War I. And for those who don't know, World War I started July 28, 1914. Now, what caused the war was a Syrian splinter rebel group decided to kill the Archduke of... Austria-Hungary, his name was Franz Ferdinand, they shot and killed him, and his wife Sophia, and when the Holy Roman, or the Hungarian Empire, sorry my cat's distracting me right now, um, gave them the ultimatum that either you let us in to do the investigation, or we're going to go to war, Ser Serbia went to Russia and it said, hey Russia, they're trying to bully us. Will you help us? Russia said, of course, and then it dragged Britain and France into it because they had secret alliances, and it then dragged Germany into it. So, it started July 28, 1914, and lasted until November 11, 1918. Now, the war was the first modern war. This is the first war where we start to see gas, where we start to see... Uh, machine guns, and that's why the death toll is so high in this war, because it had things that we never saw before. Um, so, the U.S. will enter the war in 1917. We have President Woodrow Wilson, who says, we're going to stay out of the war, we're going to stay out of the war. Now, why does the U.S. enter the war? Is because of a telegraph the British supposedly intercept from a German... Um, I think it was an ambassador, uh, Zimmerman. It's called the Zimmerman Telegraph, where it says to Mexico, hey, Mexico, if you help us by invading the U.S. and keeping them from entering the war, we will help you get back the territory you lost to the U.S. Well, before that, a lot of people sided with Germany. They sided with the Axis powers, and they wanted to enter in on the side of the Axis. And that's because a lot of people did not like the British still. And, um... When the Zimmerman Telegraph came out, a lot of people decided, no, we want to fight against the Germans now. And s names of streets that were German were changed. Sauerkraut was actually called Freedom Cabbage. There's stories of dachshunds being killed because they were a German dog. And um, we enter the war on the Allies' side. Now, just a side fact, the first battle that we see any form of gas used is the battle of the third battle of Ypres? It's either the second or third. Um, and you have this really good poem, uh, Dolce and Decorum S, which means it's honorable to die for one's country. Maybe sometime, if you guys want me to, leave a comment down below if you want me to actually do a reading of that poem because it's actually a really good poem and to analyze it is absolutely incredible. So we enter the war, last year of the war. We end up turning it around from being a major Axis victory into an ally victory. Now, at the Treaty of Versailles, which happens in 1919 in Paris, um, the major countries come together, the allies. Now, one of our biggest allies during World War I is actually going to be Japan. And when they come to sit at the table, the European countries start to ignore the Japanese, and the Japanese take offense to this. They on this war, they figured that they should get something for it. Now, the countries that are the big four in this, of course, is the United States, represented by Woodrow Wilson. Then you have Britain, which is represented by... Okay, Italy is represented by Orlando. Britain is represented by Chamberlain, I believe. Uh, France is... Descartes? Hold on. Good thing I have internet on my phone. Representatives during we are S A I L O. Okay, let's see. Okay, so the big four. The United States is represented by President Woodrow Wilson. Uh, Britain is represented by Lloyd George. Um, 
France is represented by George Clemenceau, and Italy is represented by Prime Minister Vitro Orlando. So the big four, they come together. Now, Woodrow Wilson had already come up with his 14 points, saying, look, we shouldn't punish Germany. We need to create a League of Nations where we have this international organization to stop any major war from happening like this again. And all these other things, and the big four listened, but they didn't really listen because they blamed Germany. You have to realize, before this, you always had France and Germany fighting. And the only time France actually has a straight-out victory against Germany is in the Franco-Prussian War of 1890, I want to say, uh, right before the Dreyfus Affair. Let me check the date. F-R-A-N-C-O... Yeah, I'm sorry, it's 1870. That's the only time you see a major victory. The Dreyfus Fair starts around in the 1890s. Um, so, France especially, because you have all the trenches on the Western Front dug in France, they wanted to punish Germany. But before they could even deal with Germany, they had to deal with the Soviet Union, who had left the war after um, Tsar Nicholas and his family were executed and... Uh, Stalin and Lenin take over Russia. Now, that treaty is called the Treaty of Brest-Litov, and that treaty uh, formally takes Russia out of the war and formally takes the Soviet Union out of the war. So, Woodrow Wilson's 14 points. Woodrow Wilson is very popular in Europe, not as much in the U.S., but he presents his 14 points. The big four listen, but they really don't care. And when the Treaty of Versailles is created, there is an Article 231, which is the guilt clause, which says that Germany has to take responsibility for the whole war, that Germany can no longer have a standing army over, I think it was like uh, 50,000 men, that they could have a very limited navy, and that they couldn't even have an air force. Now, the reason why they did this, well, the navy, more importantly, because during World War One, um the British and the Germans had gone to war before this to see who could build the most ships. Now, the newest ship out there was something called a Dreadnought. A Dreadnought is the first modern battleship. And the Germans and the British tried to see who could build the most. And they pretty much tied. So Britain didn't, never wanted its naval power threatened. But, again, Britain's an island country. They need materials brought in. That's where America, you have the lead and lease deal. That's why we have bases all over Europe. It's because we used to lend them materials f during World War I and World War II. And they lent us land to rent for 100 years, blah, blah, blah. But the guilt clause also says that Germany must pay back all these countries. Well, Germany is broke. And what's even funnier about the First World War is it's pretty much a family feud. Because the King of England, the Kaiser of Germany and the Tsar of Russia are all cousins. Their grandmother is Queen Victoria. And Queen Victoria actually loved the Kaiser more than she did um, her grandson who was becoming the King of England. Um, but after the war, the Kaiser is abdicated. Uh, Germany now goes into the Weimar Republic, which is a weak republic. And you have the rise of the Nazi Party, the National Socialist uh, Group. Now, originally, the Nazis were just advocating for change to bring back the German economy and create a better Germany, and they needed somebody to blame, so the Germans started blaming the Jews. They said that somehow the Jews had gotten into Versailles and that they were the cause of Germany's not only, lo only loss, but the fact that the Jews now were taking revenge on the Germans. Now, there was a man by the name of Adolf Hitler who was actually in the German army. He was from Austria, but he was too weak to serve in the Austrian army. He served in the German army, and um, when the war ended, he begged to stay in, so they asked him to spy on the Nazi party. And he starts spying. He starts seeing how they're speaking. He's, uh, he gets really upset one day when a man says Germany is dead. And he says, no, Germany is not dead. And this is where you start to see Hitler's rise in power in the Nazi party. Now, 
Because of the Treaty of Versailles, Germany's economy had tanked. They used to cost a thousand or a million marks to buy a loaf of bread. And because of this, a lot of people were starving and there wasn't many jobs. So it was a time of desperation. So Adolf Hitler and his other Nazis, they all would gather in these beer halls and they'd have political conversations to see um, where they thought everything was going to go. And uh, they were trying to figure out what they wanted to do with the German nations. So, November 8th to the 9th, 1923, Hitler and his buddies all to get together in Munich, and they tried to do an overthrow of the government known as the Munich, Munich Beer Hall Putsch. And it fails. Hitler's arrested. He goes to jail. In jail, he dictates Mein Kampf to somebody else. He comes out, and then you start to see his rise to political power, which is the beginning of World War II. Now, World War II officially will start on September 1st, 1939, and will go until September 2nd, 19, or September 2nd, 1945. Well, that's where I'm going to end it today, guys. Leave a comment down below if you want me to talk about a particular time period. It's probably going to take me three to four games to talk all about World War II and what I want to talk about. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye.